Grandest familiars are officially on the table. The man, the myth, the legend, Inkwell himself has graced us with a second note on GMS's future. And along with this note, just like last time, comes some free gifts that you can claim in game right this moment up until the dreamer update hits basically. So onto the note, what does this actually say? I'm gonna spare you all the full one-to-one -one verbatim reading of this because you could do that yourself or pop it in an AI bot and have it read it to you. But I am going to summarize the important parts here. So the initial body of this note is Inkwell going over how he's saying that this is a very ambitious project for him and the GMS team, that they are intending on doing a lot of drastic changes, and that this is only the infancy of this plan. And he only talked about it because of the pressing issues going on in KMS, namely the meso nerfs that otherwise would have done severe irreparable damage to GMS's player base, at least the reboot portion of the player base, which as we know is a majority of GMS. Now in the second portion of Inkwell's note, it's going over interactive worlds, also known as non-reboot, and it's addressing a lot of the issues that these servers have. He talks about the importance of these servers. He understands that GMS is heavily reboot focused. However, he also understands that interactive worlds are an important part of MapleStory's history. That's the way MapleStory started, and for a lot of players, that's the way they like to still play the game, even if some aspects of it are undesirable to the greater player base. The first issue he's addressing here is trade restricted items. After all, what is the purpose of playing a trade world if not every item, especially one so key to character progression such as Soul Art of Fragments, aren't tradable? In response, response to these growing demands, they are going to look at every individual item and assess whether or not they view that it should be tradable. And to quell one of the most prominent concerns, they've announced that there is one thing they can mention that as of some... Yeah, speaking can be hard sometimes, guys. They've announced that as of the June 12th update, aka the Dreamer update, newly obtained Soul Art of Fragments and known stone items in the interactive world will be tradable, and it will not include versions obtained from events, as to stop MapleStory from slipping back into the multi-account meta where you do... Well, it speaks for itself. No one wants that. I don't think so anyway. That was a horrible time. In any case, moving on to the second point, which is the trade economy or lack of a healthy trade economy in Interactive Worlds and GMS. To which Inkwell says, two things need to be accomplished. First, we need to ensure a constant influx of new players as a healthy economy requires a certain threshold of participants. Then we need to find ways to constantly encourage all players, both new and current, to be active in said economy. Which goes hand in hand and right into a world merge. Now, he has no concrete plans on this, but they are saying they are open to the idea of it, as that is the biggest problem that interactive worlds face. However, Inkwell also mentions that since the last GMS world merge in 2019, there have been many game system changes that may just cause some technical issues if they were to do the same thing that they did then now. In conclusion to that, he says, therefore, instead of rushing into this, I want to make a decision after a comprehensive review with a focus on ensuring stability. If we do decide to move forward on this, we are tentatively looking at September 2025. I will update you all more on this in the future. Not exactly the fastest timeline, but having it officially mentioned and recognized and even a tentative date is a pretty huge deal. On to his third point, which is Frenzy Totems. In summary, Inkwell acknowledges that Frenzy Totems are a little bit of a controversial issue, especially between the haves and have-nots. Now, Frenzy Totem services are something that he acknowledges, but also acknowledges the fact that this can be a little bit of a problem, as maybe not everybody has access to it, and there are a small, very small number of Frenzy Totems out there in the first place. Place. A number which can currently only go down, by the way, because you can't get it anyway, so accounts may be quit or abandoned, and they're just lost, and that's one service system down. So, a few alternatives are currently being reviewed, such as including Frenzy Totem again in the Marvel machine, or separately providing, via a sale, items with similar features as a Frenzy Totem plus other essential game goods. But nothing is planned or confirmed right now, however, they hope to announce a confirmed plan in September. Moving on to an exciting one that affects everyone in both Reboot and Interactive Worlds and the rewards shop is going to be revamped and it's going to be included in the Dreamer update. The items available are going to be scrolling on the screen right now instead of me reading them all out because that would be boring, but I will highlight a couple of big ones. Reboot is going to be able to buy pet snacks once a month from the reward shop, which is absolutely huge for building boss mules. New Age allowed us to max out our V matrix very easily, which means at an early level, you can have decent sharp eye, speed infusion, combat orders, blessing, and that's a lot of auto buffs you need. So having a pet snack available every month is pretty huge for building a new boss mule. In addition to that, purchases from Waters of Life are going to be unlimited, so you can rest more than one pet a month with reward points. Another huge thing. On top of that, you're even going to be able to buy some pets with reward points. One a month, and there are three different colors. They look like cute little lizards. Then you can even buy 90-day transparent items. Now, unfortunately, we don't know the cost of any of these things. Now, reward points can be earned in abundance if you have an army of boss mules, which, funnily enough, reward points are now incentivizing more than ever. 
not incentivizing, but making easier to do. And on top of that massive list, Inkwell even says they are considering more things that they might tell us about in the future. Moving on, Inkwell is reiterating the fact that GMS is going to be moving in its own direction, but still kind of loosely based on KMS. As an example, GMS is based on Dreamer update, but it will not follow the update as is. GMS will move forward with its own update. The update name and slogan will also be different than that of KMS Dreamer. And once again, he's taken the time to reiterate the fact that the maximum amount of Meso, aka the Meso cap, will not be coming, the availability of cubes and how potentials are obtained will not be changed, Meso acquisition multiplier and the price of boss crystals will also not be changing in Reboot, and Ursus will be staying. Which is going to take us right into High Mountain. High Mountain is new content added in the Dreamer update, and it's high-level content for 260 plus 6 drop characters. The Epic Dungeon is going to be playable starting with the Summer Update number 1, so that players can obtain the perks of the content quickly. I believe you'll enjoy accelerating your growth as quickly as possible with large amounts of EXP and Soul Earner related rewards. He then goes in to talk about Maple Coins. Maple Coins were a system added to the High Mountain Dungeon to try to combat the Meso Cap that they introduced in KMS. Now, since we're not getting the Meso Cap, we are getting an alternative. And that alternative is Fragments, something that is probably exciting to most of us. We can already get a lot of Meso from Boss Mules and Ursus and Maple Tor and just right out grinding with Meso gear. So having more Fragments is something that is very exciting to me because I value Fragments a lot more than Meso. And the final thing here, what I started with and what you've all probably been waiting for is the addition of Grandest Content Familiars. Now, there is good and bad news here. The good news is it's officially acknowledged. They are coming in Cernium, but unfortunately, they're not coming beyond Cernium. So no Hotel Arcus, no Odium, no Shangri-La. It's very sad because my character is well beyond Cernium, but the good news is I can at least go on a sixth job alt like my Buccaneer, and I can now farm Grandest Fams while I'm getting fragments for that character. One sad byproduct of the state of sixth job is that it really punished me for playing on my alts. Grinding on my Dawn Warrior before Six Job came out didn't really feel very rewarding. But now, if I were to spend time grinding on my Buccaneer, I know I am actively taking fragments away from my Dawn Warrior. However, with this change with Grandest Fams, at least I know if I'm grinding Incernium on my Buccaneer, I'm getting familiars from my Dawn Warrior while also getting progress on my alt. It makes it a little bit of a better pill to swallow than grinding for familiars on my Buccaneer in Limina and getting crap experience, no fragments, and it is horrible. So at least this is a big step forward. And unfortunately, this will not be coming with the Dreamer update, but instead on July 17th. So once again, July 17th, familiars will be dropping in Cernia, but unfortunately not after. He does say that after this update, we will continue to consider updating familiar cards to the other Grandis areas sequentially. Please, please do this and please do it quick. If they added familiar cards to Shangri-La today, I would probably go back to grinding like 12 hours a day. I need familiars. My familiars really suck for bossing. In any case, here are his closing remarks. Since the last Inkwell's note, I've been overwhelmed by your support and by your love for MapleStory. In fact, for a month after that, there were both internal and external dilemmas that undermined the plans and the approach that I and the team GMS developers were pushing for. Being able to announce today's note as well as the last note involved a lot of good faith and convincing. Nevertheless, I believe that it's right to overcome these difficulties if it means making the game better. I don't want to compromise and take the easy path. I want to remain on the right path, even if it's difficult and takes time. I hope for your continued support. Everyone on Team GMS has been hard at work preparing for the summer update. I am grateful that so many Maplers are interested and love what we do. To thank all of our players for their patience and in anticipation of the new update and all future changes to GMS, I've prepared a small gift. Which once again, log in, go to the event hall, and you can claim it by talking to the Maple Story administrator. This note seemed pretty damn huge for Interactive World players. Reboot players have exciting stuff in here too, stuff that really excited me beyond just the freebies. Grandest fans are one of the biggest things that are impacting me personally, so I'm glad that at least to some degree, they are now coming and officially recognized. The reward points shop, absolutely massive. I just hope that going forward, when they try to break away from KMS, that we still get all of the good things that they get, like their quality of life and all that stuff, but they also add things that GMS players specifically are requesting. For example, please give us all the cash shop updates that KMS gets. If we do not get the Explorer outfits, I swear I will be rioting, I will be very upset. There is like $100 that I would be otherwise spending that you guys will not get from me, so add them so I can spend money. Just take my money. Give me the option to give it to you. I, I want those outfits. I want them all. They're all beautiful. In any case, thank you for watching. Thank you to my members and patrons for supporting me as always. Praise Inkwell, and I'll see you in the next one.